In today's video, we're taking a closer look at SEMrush Keyword Magic Tool. And this is a super powerful way to do your keyword research as it allows you to get a closer look at what possible keywords you should be ranking for, better understanding your audience, and possibly even using it for other aspects such as product development. So if you are someone who's trying to understand how you can use this tool to its full capability, then this video right here is gonna cover everything you basically need to know about the tool. So with that being said, let's just jump into today's tutorial and hopefully you guys do enjoy it. So as always, when we begin these tutorials, if you want to sign up for SEMrush and get a 14 day free trial instead of the regular seven day free trial, feel free to use the link down in the video description and that is gonna be an affiliate link. So if you use that link, I do get some commission when you do sign up through that link. Uh, but with that being said, the first thing we wanna do in this tutorial is make sure we are logged into SEMrush and we have an account. And once you are logged in, you'll see something similar to this. Now, if we go over to the sidebar right here, we'll see that we have our keyword research, keyword overview, keyword magic tool, keyword manager, and so forth. And the tool we wanna go to today is gonna be the keyword magic tool. So we're just gonna click here right away and then we'll go to the keyword magic tool itself. As you can see, I've done some searches here before. So you always have a history of the searches that you've done. If you wanna delete your history for whatever reason, you have the option right here. So if you're embarrassed about something, you can click right here. So normally what I would suggest you to do is start with a very broad keyword itself that is related either to your product, your service, or your company. So let's say we are a company providing loans. So we can use the example right here. I'm just, instead of clicking here, I'm just gonna type loans. So we do loans and we are doing our services in, let's say we are a UK based company. So we will just select the UK here. But obviously if you are a company in Germany, you wanna select Germany. And also important to note here, so you might be a company in Germany, for example, but you might be selling majority of your products in the US then you don't wanna do your keyword research in uh, Germany, you wanna do your keyword research in the US. So it really depends here. So you, you could be a company in France, you're selling your products in Germany, then you obviously wanna do your keyword research in, in German. Uh, so make sure you're selecting the right audience to best understand what your customers are looking for, depending on who you're targeting. Uh, but in this example, let's say we're in the United Kingdom, so we're just gonna do United Kingdom right here. And then we're just gonna type something very broad. So we'll start with loans. So the first thing we'll see right here, we can close this down, is that we have a lot of data. And if you're using the tool for the first time, that's probably why you're watching this video. This might seem a bit complicated. So we're just gonna break this down one by one. So we have all right here. This is gonna give you basically all possible keywords that are related to our main input, which is gonna be loans at the top. You can also go to questions and instead of having keywords such as these, if you click on questions, you will have basically questions. So it's very self-explanatory. So these are the most common questions that people ask when they are Googling and it's related to loans. So how much is uh, how much student loan do I owe? Uh, what is a bridging loan? What student loan plan am I on? And so forth. So this will give you an idea of what your audience is potentially looking for. And we can say that a lot of these are student loan related. And if you're not selling student loans, you might wanna remove student from the search itself. So we're gonna jump over to another tool here at the top so we can exclude keywords and then we can exclude everything including a student. Now, if we apply that, it will change all of the data here as well. So instead we have what is a bridging loan, how to get a loan, how to get a loan with a bad credit, how do I get a loan with no credit check and so forth. So now all of a sudden it's more related to what your actual business is doing. So this can be used in many different ways just to make sure that you're targeting in your specific audience. And we can even include certain things here as well. So maybe we're only providing car loans in our company, for example, then we can include car here and all of a sudden we'll have keywords related to car loans. So how to get a car loan, how do car loans work, is car finance a personal loan, can I refinance my car loan, and so forth. And all of a sudden you can notice how our initial very broad search turned into something very niche and directed towards car loans specifically. Now obviously you could have just searched for car loans directly up here and you will get similar results 
but you can see how you can build on this and make it even more in depth just to get those very specific keywords that might be easier to rank for, for example. Uh, but going back to all which we have keywords instead of questions, uh, we can see here that we have the most common keywords in general, so Carlon, Carlon Calculator, and so forth. Now, if we go back here at the top again, we have broad match. So this will, let's read directly. So any variation of your seed keyword or keyword phrase in any order. So basically what broad match is, is that if you have broad match, it can be any variation or any keyword where loans is included in the, in the keyword itself. Now, if we go to phrase match, and let's say our the keyword we put was loans for veterans, for example, and we had phrase match on, it could only be something in the start of the keyword and something in the end of the keyword, but it has to include loans for veterans. So it could be what is loans for veterans, for example, or loans for veterans, what's the terms, or I don't know, whatever it could be. So basically what it means is that phrase match, you can have something something within the keyword itself, but your main keyword in your input is still gonna be in, in the right order, let's say. And then exact match is obviously gonna be an exact uh, match to your input, which is gonna be loans for, in this example, and that related will just give you a more broad way of looking at uh, that specific keyword. So anything that's related to the main keyword itself. Now jumping to the next one, we have languages here again. Um, you might be living in the UK, but you might be speaking French, for example. So there's still French people living in the UK who are doing their searches. And now if you are, this is probably the, the best example I can give is if you are a tourism company, now let's say you are a tourist company in the UK and you try to target Chinese tourists, for example. Then once Chinese tourists, I'm not sure if Chinese tourists actually use Google, but in this example, let's say they do, then you what you can do is look at what Chinese people are searching for once they are in the UK. So you can understand, okay, they are searching for uh, afternoon tea or whatever it is, but in Chinese, obviously. So you can try to kind of utilize that in, in a way that optimizes your website for your specific audience. But that's it for languages over here. Uh, and also another great example is that if you're in the US, the US has a lot of English speakers, but what most people don't realize is that you also have a lot of Spanish speaking people in the US as well. So you wanna make sure that you look at both of these or maybe one of them, depending on who you're trying to target. Now going over, we have volume over here. So you can list the keywords based on the volume. So how many searches that keyword on average get per month. So if you wanna to try to target something that is a bit more niche, you can do one to 10, 11 to 100 and so forth. Then we also have keyword difficulty over here. So this is not an exact science. This is basically just an estimate how hard that specific keyword is to rank for. So if you do very hard, it will be a keyword that has uh, a lot of results when you search for it. There is a lot of other websites trying to optimize for that keyword and trying to rank for that keyword. And the pages that are ranking in position one to 10, for example, are very optimized. They have good content. They've probably been ranking uh, for that keyword for a very long time. And that is the reason why it's gonna be so hard to rank for those keywords, especially if you have a brand new website or a website which is fairly new and you just started with SEO, which is most likely because you're watching this video. So in the beginning, you're probably gonna want, want to target the easy or very easy keywords, which again, it's not an exact science. It still might be difficult for you to rank, but those keywords should in practice be at least a little bit easier to rank for. Going over, we have intent. So we can go through either in informational, navigational, commercial, or transactional. If something is commercial, it could be that someone is looking to purchase something. Navigational is someone is looking for something. So where is my local or where can I get a loan in my local area or whatever it is. Informational, you're looking about information about loans. So it could be yeah, what is the best loan to get then obviously you're looking for information and you're not exactly at the final stages of your sales or not sales funnel in your 
uh, purchase stage. You're obviously looking for information before you make a final decision. So it could be anything related to just information. And then you also have transactional. Again, it's going to be something uh, I'm looking to sign up for a loan. And other, any other keywords related to that transactional stage of that purchase journey. These are not always going to be 100% accurate, but at least they will give you an idea of what your users are actually searching for. And this will be super useful. But in most cases, what I do recommend you to do is that if you're selecting a keyword you want to rank for, instead of trusting whatever these are saying, obviously you wanna search that keyword first and look at, okay, who's ranking number one and what are they offering on their website? Are they offering information? Is it navigational? Do they have a, a more priority on, on purchase and conversions? What is the results for that keyword? Because that will make you understand how you should be structuring your page. CPC is gonna be the cost per click that you're gonna pay for if you are doing Google Ads. So if you're trying to use Google Ads, this will give you an estimate on how much you will be paying in order to get clicks from that keyword. And this is not organic, this is obviously gonna be through paid. And then here again, we have include, and we already went through this, exclude, we went through this as well. And we also have advanced filters over here. So we're going to click on that. And then you can say, let's say we want to rank for long tail keywords. Long tail keywords are most or usually easier to rank for. So if you wanted to rank for a long tail keyword, or if you want to find long tail keywords, what you would do is just put something here, let's say three or four, let's do three in this example then we'll only get keywords which have three or more words, as you can see right here. And then you can also do it from, let's say 10. I don't think we'll get any results from 10, but maybe there's something in here. Can you get a logbook loan on a finance car? And this, again, doesn't have a lot of competition. So this will probably be a fairly easy keyword to rank for. And if we wanted more data on this, we can just open the overview by clicking here. This will tell us the global volume, which is 100. It's obviously the most popular in the UK. We have some in the US. And we can also see the SERP analysis down here. So who's currently ranking number one? And that will load up the page itself. We'll just verify that we are humans right here. And as you can see, they are ranking number one and it's a fairly simple website in general. Um, but this is something that you could potentially look at just to understand how you should be structuring your page as well. That's how you find long tail keywords. Going back to a general search again. So I'm going to remove um, our filtering here, advanced filtering. And we'll just go to the normal keywords and I'll break down everything again right here. So we have a car loan. The intent here is going to be commercial because the user wants to investigate brands or services. And that's what you're doing. If you're searching for car loan, you're, you're trying to compare different providers and you're trying to understand, okay, where can I get the best deal? Usually if it's a long tail keyword, the, the more, the more in depth or the more certain the user is on what they're actually looking for, the longer that keyword will be. It's not always, but in general, that's usually how it is. So I might be looking at Carlon, for example, and I go through a couple of websites. I kind of understand who has the best deal. And then I close down my computer. And then a few days later, I'm like, okay, okay, I'm gonna get a car loan. And then I already, at this point, I know which provider I want to go for. And at that point, I'm probably gonna search uh, car loan, bum, 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 from this and this company with this and this rate or whatever it is. It's usually more specific when the user actually knows what they want to purchase. And at this, these stages, you're most likely not gonna have anyone convert, but in, in obviously you're gonna convert some users here as well. But the, the more specific users are, the more certain they are on what they're actually looking for. So going from the intent, we have volume. So car loan in the UK has about 14,800 searches per month. We have the trend line over here, which will kind of give us an idea of when people are searching the most. Uh, it looks like it's gonna be in June, probably about June in summer is probably when it's trending the most. And then if we go over again, we have our keyword difficulty, which is going to be 65, which is going to be a very competitive keyword to rank for. And if I open up this again, we can see that the companies which are ranking for this keyword is going to be Barclays, 
Money Supermarket, HSBC, Sainsbury's Bank, Santander. So as you can see, we have very, very competitive brands right here, and they have probably been ranking for these keywords for a very long time. Then going over, we have CPC, which is again, it's gonna be about how much you're gonna be paying for each individual click if you're doing paid marketing for these keywords. Then we have competitive density, and basically what this is, is just a way to understand how competitive these keywords are in terms of PPC. So basically how many other uh, companies or brands are also doing paid marketing for these keywords. Next we have SERP features and SERP features basically are uh, uh, different ways that Google can show your website or highlight your website. So it depends on different type of searches and the most common one to see is gonna be people also ask. Basically a short FAQ section where you can get answers to your questions fairly quickly directly in the Google search. And for this keyword, we have, for example, site links, we have reviews, we have indented, we have video carousel, and we also have people also asked, which again is gonna be the most common one. And usually you'll see this across all of these. Uh, if we go down, we have some other ones. We have local pack. So local pack is basically when you see the Google map directly uh, with local businesses in your area, for example. Finally, we have results. So we have 1.3 billion different results for this uh, keyword. So there's a lot of competition here. There's a lot of different pages ranking for this keyword. And obviously if there's 1.3 billion results for that keyword, it's gonna be really, really hard to rank for the keyword itself. Now that is gonna be it for the metrics over here. Finally, what I wanna talk about is what we have here on the side. So right here, we can exclude things based on the most common keywords or words included in the keywords right here. So if we wanted to remove calculator, for example, because our company doesn't have any calculators, we can exclude these right here. And what will happen is that we'll not see it here in the list. If we also wanted to exclude, yeah, let's see here, India, for example, we can remove that. And this again also works the same with the filtering that you have here at the top as well. So what, what it basically does is just adds it to the list right here. So instead of having to put it directly, you can use the list here on the side uh, to find things that obviously either you don't offer or it's just something not specifically related to your business because the keywords you want to rank for should obviously be related to the page that you're optimizing because if it's not related there's no way that you will actually rank for those keywords that is basically going to be it on how you use the keyword magic tool in SEMrush. if you want to work with me on your seo projects i'll leave the link to my seo agency down in the video description so you can contact me directly and we can set up a meeting and discuss your project but that's it for today's video thank you all for watching and i'll see you guys next time